So we'll read a little bit out of Hebrews chapter 4, and we'll see, you know, exactly what God wants to do. Um, Hebrews chapter 4, beginning with verse 1, it says, Let us therefore fear lest a promise being left to us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as to them, but the word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith to them that heard it. So even back then, the children of Israel, the gospel was preached unto them, but it did not profit them. So the gospel can be profitable if it is mixed with faith because the gospel has power. Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to those who believe, to the Jew first and then to the Greek, for in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. And so God swore in his wrath that they would not enter into his rest. The rest is where God ceased from his own labors. In other words, when God did it, it was perfect. It was right. When God worked his works, it was right. Amen. And because it was right, um, he rested and he hallowed the seventh day, the, called it the Sabbath day, because in it he rested from the works that he did. And so we don't have to come up with something new. We have to receive God's word, what God has done to enter into God's rest. And we do that by faith. You know, the just shall live by faith. And so they, it did not profit them because not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. For we which have believed do enter into rest, as he has said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundation of the world. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached enter not because of unbelief. So it's saying that the day remains, you know, the Bible says today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the rebellion in the wilderness. Today is the accepted time. Today is the day of salvation. So you can believe God and enter into that day of salvation where God has rested from his labors. In other words, that whatever you're going through in this life, there is a rest. Amen. And that rest represents that what God did when he rested from his works. Amen. God wants to um manifest that his works are finished he wants he wants to reveal unto you that his works are finished when you enter into his rest by believing god having faith for instance that by the stripes of jesus you were healed then you don't have to strive you know so many people that when they say they're believing god they're doing so many things as if doing those things can help them to receive their healing. I mean, you know, they may be, you know, taking so many medications, going to so many doctors and things like that. When the Bible says the works were finished from the foundation of the world. So when God made everything, it was right. It was whole. It was righteous. It was good. So that includes our health. When God made Adam, he was healthy. Adam was not sick. Amen. Remember, everything that God made was good. So that is the work that God has finished. And so you have to look to righteousness. You have to look to what the righteous state um, is supposed to be. And that is what you're supposed to enter into by faith that day where God rested and declared everything were, was good. Amen. God says that um, after he did everything, it was finished. And that's what Jesus said on the cross. Jesus says when um, he, before he gave up the ghost, the breath, the spirit, he says, it is finished. 
Amen. So the Bible says God's works were finished before the foundations of the world. Amen. So that's what faith is. Faith is entering into the reality of what God intended, what God intended from the beginning by faith. And that's why the word of God is so important because the word of God is God's covenant. Amen. His promise. It, it reveals the will of God. Amen. What, what God has purposed and intended for mankind that we enter into it by promise. And in fact, we enter into the covenant of the Lord by the blood of Jesus. Amen. That Jesus says that he is the bread of life. He says that his bread is his flesh. And that the, the, his flesh, he says, is meat or food indeed. And that the blood is drink indeed. And everybody was appalled and said this was a hard saying. He says that y'all don't understand the words that I speak. They are spirit and they are life. I'm not talking about natural flesh and blood. I'm, I'm, I'm giving you a spiritual truth that his body was broken. And so his flesh is his body, which was broken for us. He says that's food indeed. And that the blood that was shed for the remission of sin, the blood of the new covenant is drink indeed. So he's talking about partaking of the covenant. That's what the Lord's Supper is. We, we, what we are actually doing, if you didn't know what we are doing, we are, we are acknowledging that we have received the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus for our salvation, our redemption, for our cleansing, for our purging, for our healing, for everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness. Amen. So we are partaking of that Passover lamb, that lamb that was slain. The Bible says Jesus was the lamb slain before the foundation of the world. And then in uh, Exodus chapter 12, it talks about that, that Passover lamb where the blood was put over the doorpost and the lentil so that destruction would not come unto that house. The destroyer, the death angel would not come into that house that was covered by the blood. And so God is a keeper of covenant. The Bible says that um, God keepeth covenant and he does not alter the thing that goes out of his mouth. Amen. So from God says it's from his perspective, he's going to keep covenant. But covenant is it is of two or more. Amen. It's not just one. God is one. And so we have to enter into covenant by receiving Jesus as Lord and receiving the death, burial, and resurrection. That's where baptism comes into being, that we are related unto Jesus. We relate. We are associated with his death, burial, and resurrection. We don't have to because we receive what he has done. We receive his strength. The Bible says that the ox of strength, he is the ox of of strength. Amen. The Bible says there's much increase by the ox of strength. Amen. And so we enter into covenant by receiving what Jesus did. Now, if you're going to enter into covenant, you cannot pick and choose. Amen. That the Lord gives all that he is. You give all that you are. You give your heart. He gives you what he labored for on the cross. And that becomes your inheritance. Amen. And you don't despise your blessing and you don't despise your inheritance. You don't despise that you're called by the name of the Lord. Amen. And so that's what it is to, to enter into his rest. You enter into the fact, number one, God made it right. He made it good. He made it righteous. And then it is affirmed by us accepting Jesus. We don't have to go to hell eternal death. And not only that, Jesus, he accomplished um, healing. The Bible says by the stripes of Jesus that we are healed. Amen. And the deliverance of our soul, all those things Jesus labored, it was the same works that God had done. Amen. I want you to see that. We'll go back to Hebrews, but look at St. John chapter um, 9. 
St. John chapter 9, verse 1, it says, And as Jesus passed by, he saw a man which was blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did see in this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus answered, Neither hath this man seen nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Amen. So I'm not going to get into this whole story. There's a guy born blind. His disciples asked him, amen, because the teachings of the Old Testament and things um, about um, that the children sins, the, the, the parents' sin could be visited back into the children. And then, but God spoke in of the new covenant, even in the old covenant. He says, no more will you have to say that the parents' sin and the, the children's teeth were set on edge or the parents ate um, bad grapes and the children's teeth are set on edge. Amen. That that's the new covenant. You will not have to say that. But the disciples saying somebody must have sinned because this man was born blind. Jesus says neither the man sinned nor did his parents sin while he was born blind. OK, but he says, but I must work the works of him who sent me. So Jesus is working God's works, the same works that God did at the creation. Amen. At the foundation of the world and before the foundation of the world, the same works that God worked, Jesus is working those. Why would Jesus have to work what God has already worked? Amen. Because the devil came in when Adam and Eve sinned and that the curse was brought into this world. Amen. And Galatians 3.13, Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us as it is written, curse is everyone that hangs upon a tree. Jesus is the one that hung upon the tree, the cross, but it says everyone that hung upon the tree, we were in him. He tasted death for us. He took on our sins for us. Amen. So in essence, we were in him. Amen. If we will accept him as Lord, that that the suffering servant, amen, that sacrifice that Jesus uh, accomplished on the cross, we were in him, amen. And so when he was raised, amen, from the dead, we were raised with him to walk in newness of life if we accept what he did. We did not have to go on the cross, he did. We were in him by faith. And everyone that would receive him by faith, they get the blessing of the resurrection. Amen. By faith. And what Jesus worked on the cross. Amen. Jesus suffered on the cross so that we could enter back into covenant with the Lord. God is a God of covenant. Amen. And that's what he intended for Adam and for Eve was to be in covenant where he would be their God and they would be his people and he would take care of them. When man sinned, they were separated from God and they were destined for death. And there was nobody that was born in this earth that was not tainted by sin. So no one could save man. So man was doomed except for Jesus, because he was without sin. The Bible says Jesus was tempted at every point just like us, and yet without sin. The Bible says you have not yet um, um, labored. You're not just yet struggled unto bloodshed. Jesus, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when he was praying to the Father, the Bible says he, he sweated drops of blood contending within himself that he may be strengthened by the Lord to fulfill the will of God to go to the cross. He knew exactly what was going to happen. He says, not my will, Lord, but your will be done. He needed strength from the Father, the prayer of commitment to do the will of God. Amen. And so he did that. He was obedient, the Bible says, unto death. Amen. So it says, um, neither this man sinned nor did his parents sin. When um, sin came into the world, so everybody was born 
under sin, under that sentence of death. Amen. And so by the work of the curse, the curse being in, in this earth, death was working, the Bible says. And so neither this man sin nor his parents, but, but death was working because sin was working. And so Jesus says, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. That word manifest means to appear, to be evident, to be clearly seen. Amen. And so it's, it's like this, that you have to enter into the truth. A lot of, for instance, if a person is sick, the truth of the matter, according to that righteous image and that blessed image that God created in the beginning was that man is well, but it looks like he is sick. So that person has to be um, brought into the truth. In other words, the truth has to be manifest. You know, I think a person would understand that, you know, if um, they, they had a cast and so they thought their arm was broken. Somebody said, no, your arm is not broken. You take the cast off and the arm is not broke. That's what it means to be made manifest. You, you have to behold, you know, the Bible says if any man is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, look, look, all things have become new and all things are of God. Amen. And so that's what the, to, for the works of God is should be made manifest in him or to appear. Amen. And so that by the stripes of Jesus, this guy is healed. Amen. That is the works of God to make right everything that is wrong because God made it right. But that rightness has to appear. Amen. And so it is by the gospel, the good news, faith in the word of God, faith in Jesus, faith in the one that God has sent. Amen. Connecting you with the truth, connecting you with the reality of God. He wanted the works of God to be made manifest in him, in the man. Amen. God worked and it was good. This man is blind. That's not good. Amen. The goodness has to manifest. And Jesus says that, that he is to bring about and to manifest the works of God in this man. Then he says, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night cometh when no man can work. And he explains what that day is. He says, as long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. So Jesus, if I'm in the world, then there is day. When night comes, that's when he's not in the world. Amen. When you don't see rightly, what's the day? The day that the Lord is made manifesting the day of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Jesus is the light of the world. Amen. The Bible says the word of God will manifest light. Amen. That um, the entrance of God's word brings light. Amen. God's word is a lamp unto your feet, a light unto your path. Amen. So God wants to bring light. What does the light do? It manifests the good works of God. So you see that, that if you did not know that by the stripes of Jesus you were healed, or, or even that you didn't know that you don't have to die and go to hell, that there's a Savior, when the Word of God comes, that's the day. Amen. That's the light. It illuminates what the truth is. You accept the truth by faith. Amen. When you accept the truth by faith, then your light has come. Your day has come. Amen. You, you are living in the day that the Lord intended. Amen. You've entered into that rest, rest instead of the night. Amen. The Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's the devil trying to keep people from coming into the intimate knowledge of the Lord. The Bible says God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come unto the knowledge of the truth. The Bible says, if the gospel be hid, it is hid to those who are perishing, whom the God of this world, little g, has blinded the minds thereof, lest the light 
of the glorious gospel should shine unto them. The gospel is just that good news, glad tidings. It brings forth the day. The day ushers in the good works of the Lord, which God has already worked. You don't even have to struggle with, does, is God willing that, I'm, that I should be healed? God has already worked in the day, amen, that you are healed, amen, because when God made man, man was not sick. You have to go by the original intent. You have to go back to the beginning before sin to see how things are supposed to be. You, A person may ask, you know, is it God's will for me to be sick? You go back to the beginning. Was Adam sick? No. Amen. When God created him, the original intent was righteous. The Bible says it was good. Amen. When God made man, he says it is very good. Amen. And so the, the gospel, what the gospel does it brings about the, the works or it will manifest the works of God. It is glad tidings. It is, it is good news. Amen. And so Jesus labored to bring people back into fellowship and communion with the Lord. He, he labored on the cross to bring man back to that blessed state, to bring man back to where paradise is in him. The Bible says the kingdom of God is, is within you. Amen. So that you can have peace on earth and goodwill toward men. Amen. That's what that meant. Peace on earth, goodwill toward men. That when man sinned, he was at enmity against God, the Bible says, in his mind. And for a person to be connected with God, he had to enter into covenant with the Lord. Amen. That he had to reject that the, 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 the ways which it were of this world, God would introduce the truth himself. In fact, in the Old Testament, God would reveal himself. Many times man had not known certain names of God and God would appear and he would manifest himself and he would reveal a part of himself, the name of the Lord, amen, that corresponded to the need, you know, he would be the Lord, our, our banner, our victory, our peace. He'll be the Lord, our righteousness. Amen. The Lord, our healer. You know, all those things that man needed, God would manifest himself. That that the Lord who is there, the ever present God, the, the almighty. Amen. The, 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 the mighty one. Amen. Um, the, 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 the God, El Shaddai, the God who is more than enough. God would manifest himself unto man, and under the, the terms of the name that God revealed, that as people would receive God in that manner, in that manifestation, amen, then God would be able to interact and show man his intentions for him, amen, which were good, amen. So Jesus says, I must work the works of him who sent me. God the Father sent him. While it is day, the night cometh when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I'm the light of the world. Amen. So you know that um, Jesus ministered on this earth for three and a half years. Amen. He provided light. Jesus went back to heaven, sent the Holy Spirit, and now the Holy Spirit indwells us Christians. Amen. And so the Bible says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. So it is the same light as you have no light outside of the Lord. The Bible says that in creation there was two lights, amen, a big light and a little light, amen. The, the sun, you know, is a type. I'm not saying Jesus is the sun in the sky, but the Bible says Jesus is the son of righteousness who arises with healing in his wings. The Bible says that there's no need for a son in heaven for Jesus himself is the light. Amen. So Jesus corresponds to the sun. Amen. So in creation, there was sun, the great light, which represents Jesus and a smaller light, which was the moon that represented man. The moon has no light of his own. It reflects the light, amen, of the sun, amen. And so it's a type and a shadow, amen. And so those, those lights, amen, we are to let our light so shine. We are to receive the light of heaven, Jesus himself, and reflect that light in this earth, amen. 
And the Bible talks about how that um, God, you're not supposed to take your light and hide it, put it under a bushel, uh, under a bed, but it's supposed to be put on a candlestick so it may light the, the whole house. Amen. And so that we let our light shine, which is the light of the Lord Jesus. So Jesus says, as long as he's in the world, he is the light of the world. So that light is still shining. That's how people come to Jesus. It is by the light. The Bible says this is the condemnation that light is coming to the world and people had preferred darkness over the light. Amen. So the light is like a witness. It is a witness. Amen. That when the light shines, amen, it will illuminate the truth. Amen. And so when the light shines, you are to choose life or the works of God. What the light shines in the day. You're not supposed to go back into the darkness or to prefer the darkness. The, the day represents new birth, new life, that which is right, that which is fresh. The, 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 the night represents death and those things that are hidden and those things where sin occurs in the darkness. Amen. And so you are supposed to prefer the day when the light shines it is shining the day. Amen. The Bible says the, the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn. It shines brighter and brighter until that perfect day. So the righteous walk in a path of light, the Bible says, that gets brighter and brighter as we walk that walk. Amen. That, that path of righteousness it gets brighter and brighter until we are caught up with the Lord, that, that we are in heaven until that perfect day. The Bible says we we know in part, you know, we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect shall come, that which is in part shall be done away with. And most people receive that as going to heaven as that which is perfect. But actually, uh, even on this earth, the light can shine brighter and brighter and replace that which is not perfect. Amen. So you're supposed to behold the Lord. The, we with unveiled face beholding the glory of the Lord. The Bible said that we are transformed into the same image from glory to glory. So it's getting brighter and brighter. That's what that means. That the path of the road gets brighter and brighter until the perfect day. The light removes the darkness. The light removes that which is imperfect. Amen. So we know in part, we prophesy in part. That says we are in an earth realm that is dark. But that which is, when that which is perfect shall come, then that which is in part shall be done away with. Amen. So we, 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 we don't know everything, but when the light shines, it removes what we don't know. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. The, to those who have, more shall be given. But to those who have not, even that they have shall be taken away. Amen. So God is a God of light. God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Light is progressive. You know, light moves in waves. Amen. It continues to move. The same light from the beginning has not stopped. Amen. That's a scientific fact that the, the light, when you see a star, that light actually started years and years ago, amen, when that star was created. You're just not seeing the light. That light is progressive, amen. And so that there is no equivocation with light. Light is like darkness is darkness. God separated the light from the darkness, amen. And we're not supposed to have any fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. The Bible says that there is no fellowship between light and darkness, amen. There's no intermingling between light and darkness, amen. So we are supposed to be children of the day, the Bible says, and children of the light, amen. The Bible says that even that, that the day of the Lord, amen, would not overtake us as a thief, amen, because we are children of light. How do you become a child of light? The Bible says to be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, making melody in your heart to the Lord, amen, to be Filled with the Holy Spirit is what causes us to be sober, amen, and to be alert, 
to walk in the day, to be alive, conscious unto God. The Holy Spirit will cause us to be conscious unto God because he is God and he is of God. The Bible says no one knows the things of God except the spirit of God. Amen. And he makes known to our spirit that which is of amen for the for the for the um, spirit of the man is the candle of the Lord, the Bible says, enlightening all the inward parts of the belly. Light begets light. Light is sown. Amen. Light begets light. We are supposed to be light. The, the, the spirit of the man is the candle, the place where the Lord will enlighten you. Amen. Enlightening all the inward parts of the belly that we are of God. We are of the light. Just like God is love, and we're supposed to be alone, then God is light and we're supposed to be light. Amen. Because we are of God. So, so light is not foreign to us. Amen. God created us to walk in the light. Amen. And he created us that he may enlighten us. God created us to walk in the day. Why is there a day? There is a day because there is sin in this earth. So there is a day and a night. In this earth realm, there's a day, 12 hours. Jesus says there's 12 hours in the day. As long as you walk in the day, there's no occasion for stumbling. Amen. Which means that there's 12 hours of night. Why would there be on the earth, on the earth only, not in heaven, on earth, there's 12 hours of darkness. Amen. Because God gave man a choice. Amen. Between life and death between good and evil. Amen. So if there was a choice between life and death and good and evil, there had to be a light and there had to be a darkness. Amen. There would have to be a day and there would have to be a night. Amen. But the Lord says you're supposed to operate in the day, walk in the day and not in the night. We are not affiliated with the night. We're not affiliated with the darkness. Amen. There's no fellowship between light and darkness. Amen. What does the day illuminate? What does the light illuminate? Amen. It illuminates righteousness. Jesus is the light of heaven. Amen. It illuminates what righteousness looks like. Amen. Heaven operates perfectly. There's perfect harmony, perfect union, perfect praise, perfect light, perfect temperature. Everything is perfect. It illuminates the day, what the day is supposed to look like. Perpetual day in heaven. On, on earth, there is day and night. Amen. And so we're supposed to walk in the day, 12 hours in a the day. There's no occasion for stumbling. Amen. In fact, the, the, the night is where it's, it's, it's like a prophetic phase. Amen. The only thing about night as far as the, the, the child of God is the things that you don't know where we wait on the day, the revelation, which of the Lord. Amen. So the night is simply that, that there is a evil day. Amen. Evil is out there. That is called the darkness. But we're not supposed to be a part of that. We're supposed to walk in the day, wait on illumination from God, illumination from the word of God, whatever the word reveals as the works of God. That is what, what we're supposed to walk in and that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to acknowledge. That's why a child of God is supposed to be a partaker of righteousness and to bring forth fruits of righteousness because that pertains to um, the day and light. And what is right, amen. We are, we are not supposed to be carried away with the people that do things in the darkness, amen. That, that flood of dissipation, drunkenness, the Bible says, intoxication, slumber, those things that are spiritually pertain to the night. But we're supposed to be alert, amen. Jesus told his disciples to watch and pray, Lest you enter into temptation. Amen. Temptation leads to sin, sin to death. So that is intoxicating you, enticing you to, to operate in the, in the night. The Bible says they that are drunk, they are drunk in the night. And that those that are in sleep and slumber, they are asleep in the night. Amen. 
And so the, the sin, the lust which leads to sin, which leads to death, will make you groggy and drowsy. It will impair your senses, amen, your spiritual senses, amen. So you will not be ready for the Lord's return, amen. But Jesus gave the parable about the man, uh, the master, that he, he went away to a far country and he, he put his household under husbandmen, people that would, householders that would watch over his house. And the Bible says that as their master delayed in coming, the Bible says they began to drink and become intoxicated and they began to beat his master's servant. Amen. What does that mean? It says that while we're waiting for the return of the Lord, if you get caught up in the, 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 the sin, which is of the world and worldliness, amen, it will cause you to be intoxicated. Amen. And you will be in a slumber and you will beat God's servants. God's servants are his ministers or those that stand for him. And you may not physically beat them, but you will begin to um, abrade them. You will begin to deride them. You will begin to cut them down. You will begin to speak against them. Amen. It's the spirit of the world which causes slumber. Amen. Which impair your spiritual senses so you're not in tune to the heart of God, that you would actually lift up your voice against God's anointed. Amen. And so when the Lord delayed his coming, amen, you thought he delayed, amen. And so you were not ready. The, 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 you are admonished to have your, 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 your light on and to, for your belt to be girded about you, amen. That, that's the posture waiting on the return of of the Lord. Amen. And so you, you are supposed to be ready to go just like when they left Egypt. Amen. The children of Israel, they left with their belts girded. Amen. And, and they left in a posture that they were ready to go. When the Lord comes, you're supposed to be ready to go. And your light is supposed to be burning. Your light is not supposed to go out. That's very important. Your connection to the Lord, that fellowship connects you to the light so that your light does not go out. In other words, you receive illumination. You receive revelation from the Lord on a constant basis. Amen. So that that light will not go out. Amen. The Lord has lit your candle. The spirit of the, the man is the candle of the Lord. Amen. And so you must not just be born again. The Bible says you must be filled with the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that causes you to be alert. Amen. Spiritually alert to watch. Amen. So that your eyes are wide open. You, you see and hear what the Lord is doing. And you see and hear what the devil is doing, that you're always a step ahead of the devil because the Lord clothes you in his glory. The Bible says it clearly, a thousand shall fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come nigh unto you. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. So you're in the glory. You're peering out of the glory. The Bible says God will prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Amen. So when the devil is concerned that you are caught up in the Lord, that you are covered by the Lord. Amen. That you are covered in his pavilion. You are covered in his presence. Yes, you do see. You're able to look out of the glory to see what the devil is doing. God will tell you to speak and to, to shake the things that the devil is trusting in. Those are the ones that watch. The Bible says there's got to be watchmen on the wall that see when one is approaching the city and the walls of the city. That those that will cry out. That's what it means. A watchman on the wall. You are alert. Amen. And you are activated by the Lord, by the Holy Spirit in prayer. You see and you know. Amen. And you act according to what you see and what you know. Amen. The Lord always will put you in a position so that you can see spiritually. Amen. When God would deal with his prophets. Amen. He would show them a thing. Amen. He says to Ezekiel, what do you see? Amen. He wants to make sure you're seeing what he, what you're supposed to see. Amen. You see, I see a pot and it's set in a different direction. He says, you've seen well. Amen. 
supposed to watch in pray. You're supposed to be filled with the Spirit. You're supposed to be alert. Amen. You're supposed to be able to identify spiritually what you see. And that you're supposed to see the enemy coming. The enemy. You're supposed to be ahead of the enemy. Amen. You're not supposed to be simply a reactionary Christian. Amen. You're supposed to be like Elijah. Elijah. He saw what the enemy was doing. Amen. And he would tell the king of Israel. Amen. And so the, the other peoples were blessed because the seer was seeing. Amen. That the watchman was watching. Amen. The Bible says, unless the Lord watched the city, they watch in vain. That's what that means. The Lord is watching that by the Holy Spirit that you're one with the Lord. Amen. We are praying by the Spirit. You're seeing by the Spirit. Amen. You're not just a religious person, amen, that you are one with the Lord. You're in covenant with the Lord. No more are you against the Lord. He can trust you. Amen. You're on the Lord's side. You're with him. Amen. And so he has brought you into his chambers. The Bible says, I no longer call you servants, but friends, because the slave, in this instance, does not know what his master is doing. But I'll freely tell you all things that I am doing. Amen. The word friend is a covenant word. It does not mean that we're not servants of the Lord. It means that you've been brought into a deeper relationship with the Lord. Amen. Everyone that God called friend, he told them what he was doing. God told Abraham what he was doing. God told Moses what he was doing. He called them friends. Amen. And so the, he would tell them. And this is another thing. You will be connected prophetically. Amen. Everybody is not a prophet. Amen. But people should be able to receive from the servant of the Lord, the one who sees. Amen. That that others should be able to plug in and to know that when the prophet of God, the man of God, the woman of God, that they, they are speaking what they are seeing, that they are able to see it also. Amen. Because they are of a kindred spirit. Amen. That prophetically you're able to see. The Bible says they all may prophesy. That does not mean that you are a prophet. Amen. What that means is you're of that stream. You're of that river. Amen. That river. You're of that, that same river. Amen. Holy Ghost. You, you have to understand that God places people in certain strategic places. Amen. And it, 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 it matters. Amen. Who are in those places? Because the Bible says a hireling. When he sees the wolf coming, he runs away. Amen. And so the sheep are slaughtered by the wolf. Amen. But the Bible talks about the good shepherd. Jesus is a good shepherd that lays down his life for the sheep. Amen. The revelation of the Lord is that God's people are very precious to him. And if God could find a man faithful, amen, who will be faithful to his house, Amen. That God will put him over his house, but God will not put a person over his house who does not know how precious his people are to him. Amen. For the good shepherd, the Bible says, will lay down his life for the sheep. That's that's precious. More precious than his life. How can the sheep? <clears throat> Be more precious than your own life. <laughs> Hallelujah. How can the sheep be more precious than your own life? Only if you had the heart of Jesus, the heart of the good shepherd. Amen. And, and that is in all the, the veins of ministry. If you had the heart of the Lord, if the sheep are not as more precious to you, then your own life, then you don't have the shepherd's heart. The Lord says that he is looking for shepherds after his own heart. David was a shepherd after God's own heart. Amen. That even Solomon found favor with the Lord. When he asked Solomon, what do you want? He says, I'm but a child. He says, I need wisdom to go in and out before your 
people. Amen. Because he cared about God's people. The Lord says, I'm not only going to give you wisdom, but I'm going to give you things that you didn't ask for. I'm going to give you the wealth. I'm, I'm going to give you um, um, freedom from your enemies and, and all those things that you didn't ask for because you counted the life of the sheep, the life of my people more precious. Amen. And so God has called us to see, to hear, and to know, amen, to, to walk by light, to walk in the day of the Lord, amen, that day which is the rest, the day that was revealed even from the foundations of the world, the day that was confirmed, amen. Jesus, when they said that Herod was asking about him, he says, you go tell that fox that to, today and tomorrow I do cures. He says, and on the third day I shall be perfected. Amen. He says, you go tell him. You go tell that fox that I'm on this earth and, and I'm doing the Father's will. I'm doing the works of the Lord. He says, on the third day. I'm going to be perfected. That's the works of the Lord. The, the, the resurrection of the Lord ushered in the day that the Lord has made, that we can enter into that day by accepting Jesus. Amen. And in the word of God and what the word of God reveals. Amen. And so God has called us to operate, to walk in the day. Amen. And if there's 12 hours in the day, if you walk in the day, there's no occasion for stumbling. That means you're doing the will of the Lord. The Lord will uphold you and sustain you in that day. So thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for the light, Lord, that your word reveals. Amen. What it shows, Lord God, how it shows forth what is your heart, what is righteousness, what you intended, Lord God. Amen. And Father God, we desire to be one with you and covenant with you, Lord God, to know your heart, Lord God, and to have your name revealed unto us. Father, thank you for all your goodness in Jesus' name.